Hello all, and welcome to the introduction to the University of Vaasa strategy process. My name is Marko Kohtamäki and I work as a professor uh, in School of Management. Um, I have been given a delight uh, to facilitate this strategy work at the University of Vaasa. Um, so what I will do in this short introduction is that I try to save time from our strategy workshop day uh, by talking a little bit on how we are working during the day and how the documentation, how the actual strategy document is created during the day. So this is intended as a very short introduction to the most practical documentation site let's say template and tool side of our strategy process so that we wouldn't need to use time for this uh, in the actual workshop day. So this is a brief video about our way of working during the strategy day. The strategy work at the University of Vasa um, is led by our rector Minna Martikainen um, who has given the timeline for the, the, the new strategy from 2024 to 2030. We intend to use five different tools in the strategy process. And we start the process by a really active, uh, engaging, uh, one long one day workshop where we intend to use all the five different tools to create a first draft about the strategy. So within the one uh, day workshop, uh, schools will be divided into subject areas, which are close, which closely match to our existing research groups. And in those subject area, small groups, you will create the strategy by using these tools for the subject area. And then the different subject area uh, workshops will uh, generate eventually the strategic thinking of the school bottom up from the subject areas to the school level, which will then feed into the university level. The subject areas will start working with the strategy in order to provide important feed and investment needs for our top management. And, and, and this is a short introduction how this will be done in practice during the day. So this is just an overview about the University of Vasa strategy process. As such, you see there the different layers. We have the management team level, which is kind of carrying the, the strategy work, managing the strategy work uh, from top down and bottom up, uh, and, and trying to integrate the views from the top and from the bottom uh, so that the strategy would be as concrete and useful as possible. Of course, this is the first round when we are doing the strategy uh, by this process and tools. And the wish and the idea is that our 15 uh, subject areas uh, that create and generate the university uh, would be all using the same tools to create strategy. So the whole uni after this, the whole university and all of our 15 subject areas will be using the same tools and the same process for their strategic thinking. And hopefully this will create some common thinking amongst ourselves and make it a little bit easier to discuss about strategic issues and make strategic decisions when we are at least using the same tools and the same concepts. But that of course requires that the different the, the key personnel in those subject areas will actually learn the process, learn the tools and contribute to the university strategy by creating their subject area based strategies. As I say, this is the first round in the first year. It develops over time. So what we need to understand is that in the first round, really quickly and through a, a very short process, we can't generate an optimal, most innovative outcome. But what is needed is a little bit of patience so that uh, we will eventually achieve what we are 
what we want and perhaps a little bit more innovative inputs than perhaps what we will see in the first round of the process. When we start the work, uh, we are, as I said, we are using five different tools. Uh, we are using strategic capabilities, customer value promise, strategy map, targets, measures and investments, and then a tool that I call the path. And we start from strategic capabilities. We start from strategic capabilities in order to, to get the discussion started, uh, to start from a tool that is a little bit broader, really important, but a good starting point for a strategic discussion. And uh, at this discussion base, we will use a template where we combine two different theoretical approaches, two different uh, tools, so-called strategic capabilities, and on the other hand, so-called must-win battles, which I will explain uh, after the, the, the case. Through this case, as I said, I will not focus on detail on the actual theories or the theor theoretical approach behind uh, strategic capabilities, so-called resource-based view, but instead, in this video, I focus only on how we are actually mapping the strategic capabilities. And just to do that so that you get an idea, I provide you the, the most simple and interesting, one of the most interesting case studies um, from which you can find a lot of teaching cases and research cases, of course, is IKEA. And, and this picture here uh, demonstrates the capabilities of IKEA has been depicted uh, by many scholars in previous studies, including Michael Porter, uh, where he talks about activity systems. This tells what is the, the, the core idea of strategic capabilities. We are not seeking uh, separate individual valuable resources or processes, but what we are seeking in this first exercise is a common understanding of our strategic capabilities, which is a combination of resources and competencies, activities and processes that is generating competitive advantage to us. And everything we do in strategy is related to our past, to our history, and of course is related to our future. We are planning for the future. Strategy is about reaching the vision that we are setting to 2030, which means that the strategy is and are those means that will enable us to achieve the vision. That's the simplest definition of strategy and a really concrete one. Means that enable us to achieve the vision. And the vision, the target in practice, we set for 2030, we come to that. This picture here tells that what, how IKEA sees its strategic capability. It's a combination of these different types of resources and processes that create the combination that generates competitive advantage for IKEA. IKEA wouldn't have the competitive advantage by using any of these single uh, processes or resources as such. But the strategic capability and competitive advantage is, of course, created by this combination, which has been developed over tens and tens of years. And even though many competitors know this, and this has been depicted uh, by multiple uh, books and, and research articles in history, this is still difficult to copy because it's a broad concept. It covers uh, the combination of resources, competencies, activities and processes. And, and when you are looking at this and how they are related to the Scandinavian design of IKEA furnitures, you understand what is meant by strategic capability. It's a combination of resources and processes. In this first exercise, we are trying to search for the combination of resources, competencies, activities and processes of your subject area. This is what we are trying to describe here. And as said, it's combining, to sharpen the approach, it's trying to combine an element from must-win battles to the same tool. 
this does not follow exactly the idea of strategic capabilities, but as I said, intends to sharpen the approach a bit. On the right hand corner, uh, you see an example of our own research group uh, vision and then the operationalization of that vision into practical targets, which are the yearly targets for the year 2030. So in 2030, according to university level targets being set by the rector, these should be uh, our research group or our subject area level targets. And the subject area here refers to the strategy or as we call it, strategic business development as a subject area, uh, combining the targets, of course, related to, to teaching, research and, and projects. Also internationalization and, and so forth. But, but those are the core, three core processes that we of course have. Then uh, the bold elements uh, just by on the left side of the so-called cloud, you see uh, what I call as the must win battles. So these are trying to capture the most difficult and important battles that has to be won in order to achieve the vision, in order to win the war, must win battles. And those in this example includes top tier research output, student attraction, so our capacity to recruit uh, international and national students, great place to work, focusing on our HRM and, and then uh, attracting companies and projects. These are the primary areas where we need to strive in order to, to achieve the, the vision. And what is important is the, the, the operationalization, what is done as practically as possible. And first you see the number, which is our current performance, and then an arrow which is leading to the target performance, which in, which in terms of the, the first figure, 2051 uh, kilo euros and, and leading to 717,000 euros would be our total external funding target. Then the second one is UFO points, the third one uh, UFO 23 UFO points, and then graduated bachelor students, master students and PhD students. And, uh, and on the left side, uh, you see the depiction of those processes and resources uh, that are needed uh, to achieve the targets. Uh, so on the, on the left side, for instance, in the top, within the top tier research output, you see, for instance, um, how I see or how we see the core capabilities, combination of our core topical areas that is creating the, the, the starting point, the base, theoretical base for our competitive advantage. So this is the uniqueness of our research groups and our strategic, our subject areas, competitive advantage. We have there servitization and PSS, strategic alliances and ecosystems, processual view on strategic change and Sociomaterial applications or microprocesses in strategy, and at the middle, strategy and business model innovations, where all of these are somehow related. This we see as a as a, some kind of theoretical com combination of those theories and our approaches, where we are or we intend to be competitive in international scope. And then we know that uh, tech company connections and collaborations with international top scholars uh, capture some of those activities, which we think that are as part of the, the, the contents, uh, key activities in uh, our, uh, as part of our strategic capabilities. So this is one example, but it's important that it's combining kind of the key central theoretical areas that create our competitive advantage and then um, those activities that enable us to utilize those theoretical areas in uh, achieving the top tier research output. And the same for attracting students, international program marketing regarding 
particularly our EPAS accredited master program, digital contents and skills in those courses, and then the multidisciplinary business development expertise that we are trying to build uh, when in our students when competing in the markets. Great place to work. Uh, we try to establish the idea and implement, constantly implement uh, the idea of trial and error culture, but also to acknowledge the, the, the idea or of publish and perish, meaning that we embrace the publication culture that, that we need to strive in terms of top tier academic publishing if we want to compete uh, in the international markets. And then in terms of attracting companies and projects, platform for strategy professionals to grow and develop, one of our central targets, and then our activities and processes and work in the executive MBAs, that MBA program of University of Vasa, which we are constantly uh, collaborating and, and working. With. So this is kind of the, the, the short, very brief example of how we see the vision and capabilities of, of our strategic business development subject area. So this would be the first exercise uh, for which we have approximately an hour uh, of discussion uh, within the strategy workshop. So we start the strategy workshop of five strategy tools from this discussion. And what you have received is, and you will receive, is uh, a, an empty template with some of these examples, which you will fill in real time uh, when having the strategy discussion within the subject area, led by the, the head of the subject area, and then uh, supported by a person who is um, documenting real time the work that is done by the group in terms of the discussion. So everything is documented live real time. And after the day, you will have a documentation of the a synthesis of the discussions, uh, which creates the base for the strategy. So in its core, the strategy will be building on those five different depictions uh, using different tools. In the second exercise, uh, we will be using uh, so-called uh, value promise uh, from Blue Ocean Strategy. So this is the, the template that you will receive. An example of this is uh, the yellow tail example from Blue Ocean Strategy book. Um, which is a really famous and, and good one, of course, explaining uh, the, the concept of blue ocean, meaning attracting the so-called non-customers, which the, the yellow tail as a wine label actually targeted uh, and, and did achieve to some extent. And the idea was that when this company was, was considering that they wanted to bring in to the market a new wine label, uh, it should have something unique. It should be attracting a new novel customer segments, which are non-customers uh, for wines. And, uh, and how they intended to achieve it was um, by, by challenging the existing components of uh, manufacturers value promise, and instead creating a value promise on the three components that were, was not applied uh, by other manufacturers and that intended to attract a totally new customer base of non-customers of wines, uh, which they uh, kind of describe as Budweiser drinkers, for instance. Um, overall, I think that the tool is extremely valuable. It's a good way of uh, synthesizing value promise of any uh, organization. Uh, and it can be easily used in a real-time discussion, in a live discussion. What we are trying to do in this exercise is that we are trying to achieve common understanding about our value promise for three different customer sec uh, students, academic community, and then funding agencies dash companies. This we have predetermined being broadly our subject areas uh, customer segments. Now it's easy to understand that customer segmentation is much more complicated than this. And these, all of these segments could be split into much more fine-grained, smaller segments in order to really understand the segment-based 
needs, what are the customer needs in a specific segment. And we understand that those do vary. But for the sake of simplicity, um, we focus on these segments. And then within your exercises, you can have a more thorough discussion about the segments and varying customer needs, if you so desire. In this example, uh, the value promise is uh, um, synthesized at the, at the bottom row of the figure, meaning that the value, value promise is typically determined by the manufacturers based on price, based on use of analogical terminology and, and distinctions in line communication. In terms of marketing, it can be above the line or uh, in terms of aging quality, wine yard prestige and legacy, wine complexity and rain. So the idea is that typically wine manufacturers position wines in terms of prestige, legacy, uh, a little bit of elitism, perhaps complexity, um, perhaps for the non-customers, wines and wine consumption, consumption is, is understood of being a little bit elitist and complex. You need to understand wines in order to select properly and really enjoy them. And that may make some potential of wine consumption um, unapproachable for some of the non-customers, those Budweiser drinkers. The complexity and elitism was actually questioned by the, 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 wine, the company that brought Yellowtail into the market. And instead of, of that type of value promise, an idea of strategy and branding, they decided to try to approach a totally new customer segment, which is from not from the existing market, but from outside the existing market. They use the concept of non-customer. And those non-customers, those Budweiser drinkers, they intended to approach by value promise of easy to drink, ease of selection, fun and adventure. Easy, easy drinking meant that these, these wines are quite simplistic and they don't taste particularly strong. Ease of selection, you have only one type of, wine, one type of white wine, one type of red wine, and then fun and adventurous. Uh, they, will, they were basically marketed as um, relatively simplistic manners. So, for instance, the etiquette of the wine uh, involves a kangaroo, kangaroo in an Australian dessert. And uh, it, it, it seems like the opposite of uh, elitist in, in many different ways. I do not recommend, but if you, if you want to try, uh, in any case, the tool is great. Uh, I think the tool is a fantastic way of synthesizing value promise of any organization. And here we intend to use it for illustrating, creating a common understanding of the value promise of your subject area. And here are three examples. Below, you see the, the customer segments, students, academic community, funding agencies, and companies. And in this example, and in this template, we assume that you have six components of value promise. You could have 12, you could have three. Our assumption is that any organization or, or front end of any organization is difficult to manage if the value promise is more than six components. I assume that actually implement, actual implementation of six components to your organization is already quite a challenge. Three is probably closer to reality. Twelve might be quite unrealistic. So in order to make something real, something concrete, you have to keep it simple. So we need to simplify our way of working in order to, to really implement the strategy. And value promise is, of course, a key component of any strategy. These two exercises are leading to the third exercise, which is called the strategy map from Kaplan and Norte. Strategy map builds on uh, Ballas scorecard, uses the dimensions of Ballas scorecard, a little bit applied manner uh, in this framework that I'm often using. Uh, in the highest row, you have uh, the financial targets, or in this case, as I would call them, the targets, or uh, in practice, 
I mean uh, the targets and measures which are close to productivity. So all of these three uh, targets set there uh, represent productivity of our three core processes. So productivity of teaching operationalized in graduation of bachelors, masters and PhDs. Productivity of our research project process operationalized into UFO points and UFO 23 UFO points. External funding productivity in terms of our societal impact operationalized in terms of external funding uh, where uh, the target in, in this case is set as an overall external funding target over 700,000. In the second row uh, you see the customer values which are drawn directly from the previous exercise. So we are actually in the, in the previous two exercises we are building the base for the strategy map. So we are not starting from the strategy map which would be a very complex tool and idea to start with but we are building step by step through the easier first two exercises to then come into the strategy map and start uh, kind of finalizing the idea of our subject areas strategy map. So this strategy map synthesizes the idea how we think that we are achieving the, our operationalized targets through the activity systems that is built in the strategic map. Strategic map synthesizes the strategic logic of any organization. In the third row, you see the processes and activities which intend to create value from the lowest row resources and competencies. There are a few examples of processes and activities, high quality courses in terms of students, uh, faculty mobility in terms of scientific impact, academic community, and then external funding in terms of, uh, uh, fun in terms of funding agencies, uh, companies, sales processes as, as an example of process. So how through certain type of processes we in intend to create customer value from the resources and competencies to achieve uh, the targets being set. Idea is that processes and activities enable customer value creation in cost for customer segments with certain type of customer needs from the resources and competencies to achieve the, the strategic target. So the strategy map eventually should synthesize the strategic logic of your subject areas. So this is the third exercise and perhaps the most important depiction of the strategy for your subject area. This builds the base for the fourth strategy tool, fourth strategy discussion, which is targets, measures and actions. This is actually about actions and investments which are on the right side of the table. Targets and measures or indicators come from the university. So they have been set beforehand and your heads of subject areas have received an Excel where he or she can transfer the targets and measures to this group, to these columns. The, the core idea here is to discuss and decide what are the most critical investments and development projects, so-called strategic actions, to achieve the targets. And this should be as concrete as possible, so that you are setting really concrete development projects, which involve investments, which involve activities, which enable you to reach the strategic targets. And of course, in its core, you see the three most important strategic targets, targets in the highest row in the strategy map. The investments, development projects, strategic activities should facilitate the achievement of those strategic targets. So what you should not be writing here in the actions is broad statements about what we do. 
what someone does in our subject area or what is important in our subject area. You should try to be as concrete as possible in terms of ident identifying development projects and investments so that you can clearly see that when we are describing the investment or the development project in this manner, we can actually see when we have finalized it, what we have achieved, what is the target uh, in terms of the development project, what we are trying to achieve with the project and what will be the cost of the project. So actually, those investments could be evaluated and their net present values could be evaluated after the process. That would be optimal. The worst situation is that, well, perhaps the worst situation is that there is nothing and you think that everything is done and ready. Perhaps the second worst situation is that the statements are really broad, that the say statements there are such that they emphasize important things but it, based on those statements, it would be relatively difficult to create any development project under the development programs. So as concrete development projects and investments as possible, so that they enable you to achieve the targets being set for 2030. Be ambitious and be clear, be concrete. The targets as they come from the Excel are extremely high in purpose. The university has set in purpose particularly high targets so that you wouldn't be aiming incrementally only to achieve the targets so that the thinking in the strategy process would not aim to be or intend to be incremental but rather that you would look outside the box and try to find also radical ideas and understand that the university wants to hear that how you can radically develop and reinvent the strategic logic of your subject area in order to achieve the extremely high targets to become competitive at an international level. So extremely high targets are there to challenge us to think radically about the means that we are using to achieve the vision and target size. Okay, this is actually, that was the example of the um, uh, city of Vasa. This is then uh, the, the same example from our research group. At the moment, you don't see actions and investments yet, uh, but you see the, the targets and, and then the measures and for our subject area, the target levels as they are coming from uh, the university. So they are extremely high for 2030 for the reasons I, I just explained. These basically create the content. So here in the actions, we intend to synthesize, let's say 10 to 20 most important development projects and investments. Here in the actions, we intend to synthesize, let's say 10 to 20 most important development projects and investments. Those 10 to 20 development projects and in investments are then brought into this path, which is the final tool from 2024 to 2030. That's the timeline. And then on, on, on the left side, you see uh, the research teaching and projects at 3% development programs. And in addition, at the moment, there are internationalization and digitalization as added development programs. Let's see how we eventually treat and name the development programs in different research, in different subject areas. From the previous exercise, those 10 to 20 development projects and investments are brought in to this timeline picture uh, to fill in uh, those development programs. So the idea is that you are creating development programs which involve development projects and investments, which are for your subject areas. And then when we have 15 subject areas at the university, those 15 subject areas 
by by doing this are kind of communicating their development priorities and investment priorities for the school management and then for the university management and in short kind of this is of course the, the most important phase of the process everything else leads to this operationalization of the strategic development programs so that they can be then uh, operationalized into projects and tasks into Gantt charge and a follow-up can be follow-up system can be created how these development programs projects investments are progressing uh, and if they are not what can we do to help uh, the implementation so that the whole process is actually being followed up and implemented instead of kind of strategy just being empty words and couple of slides. In this case, the strategy intends to be a operational and practical tool for uh, implementing the universe and following up the university development, which actually takes place in those subject areas and schools. And after the development projects and investments are being um, synthesized into this picture you can actually compare the collection of projects and investments on the the targets on the upper corner and co critically consider that if we have implemented and when we have implemented all these development projects and investments have we actually increased our level to those targets so that we are achieving those targets if not if the answer is no then we need to reconsider that how and where should we be investing in in order to increase our capability level to the extent that we can actually achieve the targets where are the central bottlenecks what are the important strategic problems the must-win battles that has to be won in order to achieve the strategic targets this is not much more difficult than that as such all the tools in the process the five tools are quite simplistic and intuitive the process is relatively simplistic and intuitive easy to adapt as as easy to adapt as possible and we intend to go through the whole process within one day we understand that that's quite a lot for one day exercise but it intends to save our key personal time so that we would actually have a walkthrough for all our subject areas before the summer so that you can then consider these issues that were mapped in your strategy process within one day during the summer and then after the summer we can have a shorter kind of reflection type of workshop where uh, we can reflect and get back to the strategy documents and perhaps improve some of the contents when the uh, development of strategic thinking uh, has happened uh, through the summertime. So the idea overall is that development of common strategic thinking requires time. It doesn't happen overnight or in one workshop or a couple of workshops. Perhaps it will, the, the development of the common strategic thinking will require years. It requires multiple rounds over the years. And eventually, we see that our uh, our management processes and our common strategic thinking is aligning more and more and we are actually achieving the strategic targets at the university level because our subject areas are improving their performance but it has to be understood that it happens step by step uh, not all at once so development of strategic thinking requires time this is just a very very short brief summary of what we will do during the one day workshop um, oh quite certain that we will have very very interesting workshop day with all of you thank you